Lindy West made news earlier this year when she announced her decision to quit Twitter after years of online abuse and harassment. But she didn't pull shoot because of the Twitter trolls themselves for half a decade. West has become adept at forging on in the face of, you know, uh, hate online. A large part of why she left was because of the U.S. election. So we're going to have more on that in a minute. West is here today with her memoir. It's called Shrill Notes from a Loud Woman. We're so pleased to welcome Lindy West into our studios. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so you flew into Toronto, into Canada. You Instagram this beautiful picture. Can we show it? Yeah. Okay, let's show this pic <laughs> picture with the caption. It's such a relief to be in Canada for a second. We are obviously <laughs> happy to have you, but why is it such a relief? Oh, just, um, it's, it's pretty grim in my country right now, <laughs> mm -hmm. at least for, um, I think, most of us. Um, so it was just, I hadn't really realized what it would feel like to land in a place where um, it's not complete sort of chaos and destruction. Did you feel a difference when you landed? <laughs> I really did. Did you really? It's like I stepped off the plane and the airport was like full of families hugging and like <laughs> it didn't feel like, I, I just feel like everyone I know in America is a, just about to burst into tears all the time. <laughs> right, yeah. And it was like diverse and there were just, um, I mean, and this was probably half in my head. It just right. felt like... A little lighter. A little lighter. <laughs> a little lighter, a little saner. Well, well, we're so happy to have you. And Thanks. that's a good description for your book as well. Uh, we've got a little bit of everything in there, don't we? And yeah. very personal stories, some vulnerable stories, that's for sure. I want to talk about the power of language and words. Now, near the beginning of the book, you say that you don't like it when people use words like big or big boned. You want to hear the word fat. Why? I just don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's just, just a descriptor, a neutral mm -hmm. descriptor, like tall. And I think that by... Uh, making it into this sort of untouchable slur, we give it a lot of power. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with my body and, you know, existing in the body that I have. And so I don't want to validate that by being afraid of the word. It took you a while to get to that point, though. And you talk about that in the yeah. book. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, especially women grow up struggling with this all the time. And pretty much everyone, mm -hmm. every woman. Because um, we're taught that there are, there's a really narrow set of parameters that you have to fit in order to be like the right kind of woman and a successful woman and a desirable woman. And so, yeah, you know, it definitely took into my mid to late 20s before I really felt like I could go live my life without this barrier. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it was, I had this realization that I had been waiting for my life to start. Like I have to become a certain size before I can really go out there and pursue what I want to do. Even in my career, I was still sort of like, mm -hmm. and then I just realized one day, like, what am I what am I waiting for? You know, I get one life. I'm, you know, 26, 27. What, why am I waiting? And you know, it's so, when, I was reading, when I was reading that portion of the book, I could so relate to that. I think every person can relate to that, where it's that sense of, okay, it's, if I accomplish this, then it's going to be good. If right. I get to this point, then it's going to be good. Right. And I, had, and I just one day I was like, you know, the scariest possible thought was, what if I never become thin? Mm -hmm. That's totally possible. In fact, you know, statistically probable. Like, it, it, you know, long-term sustained drastic weight loss is really rare. And I was like, okay, what if I do have to live in this body for the rest of my life? Um, and what if I could adjust that to feel like I get to live in this body for the rest of my life? You know, like I, I my body's strong and my body's healthy and I'm happy and it carries me around and, yeah, you know, and, and it, it. it really changed everything for me, mm -hmm. um, making that uh, flipping that switch. Let's talk a little bit about you quitting Twitter, shall sure. we? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like the, you quit Twitter, what? You know, a lot of the generation whatevers would say, but you quit, yeah. what, a month ago? What, yeah, it was like there? right around the new year. Yeah, and you write in the book that online harassment is not virtual, it's physical. Mm -hmm. So what made you finally decide to deactivate, let's say? It was definitely the election. I was yeah. thinking about, uh, it, it was, you know, right as 2017 started, um, you know, I was sitting there having some totally pointless argument with some completely random anonymous person that was clearly trying to waste my time. And Which you seem to get into with people, <laughs> by the way. I do. <laughs> well, people are, people are wrong and irritating. Right. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, and it's like, it's funny because I, I probably engaged with 1% of people who came at me. But so once in a while, like, what am I on this thing for if not mm -hmm. to communicate with people? So, yeah, once in a while I engage. Um, but anyway, uh, most of them I ignored. I didn't get a lot of credit for ignoring people. <laughs> I got, but you ignored people, a lot of people. I ignored a lot of people. But it, all people want to talk about is of course. people that I got into stupid fights with. <laughs> but anyway, I was sitting there arguing with some horrible man. And then, um, you know, I 
noticed that Donald Trump had like taunted North Korea about their nuclear program. And I was like, why am I on this machine? Mm -hmm. Like, why am I like using my name, like letting my name be associated with Twitter at all and sort of validating it as a platform when, you know, potentially it's going to be complicit in the end of the world. I was just like, Uh, man, I got to get out of here. It it just, and and I... Do you feel good about it? Like you feel... Do you feel light like you did when you stepped off the plane in Canada, do you? Yeah, I mean, I just have a lot more time. You know, uh, it it really, really, I can't um, overstate how dire it feels in the States right now. It's really, really scary. And I feel sort of charged to do my best work in 2017. I really want to create things that matter. And I didn't want to spend five hours a day just feeling anxious, arguing with Jerks. jerks. <laughs> you know, there was including there, the one guy. This no one purpose. made me so mad. The guy that impersonated your father after his death. Yeah. And then this is something that you guys are going to have to pick up this book because this story is unbelievable about a guy, uh, you know, impersonating your father and then you getting into it with him and then you end up having a two and a half conversation, two and a half hour longer conversation mm-hmm. with him. Yeah, it was actually really illuminating. Um, it was, uh, and I think that guy was kind of. Um, abnormal in terms of Twitter uh, trolls, yeah. you know, obviously he was a little exceptional and um, was willing to get on the phone with me and, and talk. And we, it, it was, it gave me a lot of insight into mm-hmm. who these people are. They're not happy. Um, they're, and it, I think it has a lot of parallels with the U.S. election in, in terms of, you know, uh, people, uh, people who voted for Hillary, uh, people who are not Trump supporters are really scrambling right now to figure out what do we do? Mm-hmm. And how do we sort of reverse this polarization that's happened? How do we communicate with the other side who seem so far away mm-hmm. and, and who seem also just sort of determined to inflict pain on us? Like the, the Trump administration is vindictive. Like it's, it's everything he's done so far has not just been normal policy. It's been like aggressive and really cruel in the same way that that internet troll felt to me. And it was right. just like trying to hurt me on purpose those feel the same. And so getting to this point where I could empathize with this person and understand where he was coming from um, and think of him as a human being Mm -hmm. really taught me a lot. Yeah, and there's so many stories uh, like that. It is a fascinating read. Lindy, thanks so much for being here. This is the book. The book is Shrill Notes from a Loud Woman, the author, of course, Lindy West. Thanks for being here.